I um, want to preach the third uh, part of um, this haircut from hell. And tonight it's going to be more of a, uh, of a teaching message. And I just hope you'll relax and just sit back and feed on the Word of God. And can everybody hear me all right? I'm going to shut that fan off. Is that okay with everybody? Uh, it, it's, if I can, I don't know. Anybody know how to shut a fan off? Pull the plug. <laughs> I'm going to pull the plug. Brother Larry Brown preached on what are you plugged into? But anyway, it just it just noisy up there to me, and I couldn't concentrate on it. I'm I'm hot already, and I ain't even started preaching. But uh, anyway, uh, let's uh, I'll just in a way because we're going to be looking at so many scriptures tonight. I want to just review in a way of Ju Judges chapter 16. But you don't need to turn there right now. You remember that Samson uh, let himself get his power cut off of his life by the cutting of his hair, and we said there's seven locks there. Tonight, I want to. Uh, we talked about first of all the. Have I got that mic on all right? We talked about, first of all, the personal application of, of the haircuts from hell, how Satan wants to cut off our personal life with God. This morning we talked about churches and denominations, religious institutions and ministries, how Satan gives their haircut and robs the power out of their lives. Now tonight, we're going to look at, at Samson in an unusual way. And tonight's going to be, this is not... Uh, this is not baby food tonight, all right? This is real meat from the Word. But it'll help you, and it'll build your faith if you'll do it. This third aspect of haircuts from hell is about Samson as a type of Israel prophetically. Believe it or not, Samson is a picture of the nation of Israel. The Bible said something about him in verse number 20 of chapter 16, that he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. He wist not that the Lord was departed from him. And uh, how many of you know that the Lord departed from Israel? He departed from Israel. Now, I'm going to give you 13 ways real fast, and you'll probably need to re-listen to the message to get you a CD or something, of how Samson is a picture of the nation of Israel. First of all, uh, Samson had been set apart by God. Israel had been set apart by God. Uh, but Samuel was continuously backsliding and disobedient. From the time Israel came out of the land of Egypt, they were continuously backsliding and disobedient. Number three, they were involved in spiritual harlotry. You can read that about the nation of Israel, how that they went whoring after other gods, the Bible said. Verse, uh, the fourth one, Israel, though, was used mightily of God. Moses and the law given, the scriptures given, the light to the nations and they brought us our Savior in the human side of things. And number five, the days, they had their days of glory. Saul, uh, Samson had his days of glory. But the days of David and Solomon and, uh, and Moses, there were days in Israel's history when they had days of glory. And that also, uh, Samson had God's presence, and Israel had God's presence. But God's presence departed from him, and God's presence departed from Israel. Israel was cut off of their preeminent position and favor with God. And Samson was cut off from his position and favor with God. Israel was turned, uh, Samson was turned over to his captors and his enemies. And Israel was turned over to their captors and their enemies. We sat down by the rivers of Babylon, and there we wept. Yeah. Psalms 137, as they took them captive away in the Bible. Israel was blinded, or Samson was blinded. And the Bible said in Romans chapter 9, 10, 11, that Israel is blinded in part. Tenthly, Samson grinds in the prison of his captors. And Israel for centuries has ground out of living and ground out of life in the lands of their enemies. But Samson was restored and Israel will be restored. Number 12, Samson was used to destroy many of God's enemies. And Israel will be used in the latter days to destroy many of God's enemies. 
And lastly, number 13, Samson was made sport of by the heathen. And again in Psalms 137, they sat down by the rivers of Babylon and we wept. And they said, sing us a song of Zion. They mocked him and, and, and so forth. So that's at least 13 ways that Samson is a picture of the nation of Israel. This Bible is not just another book. This Bible has written within its stories and historical accounts several layers of great truths and so forth. And I want you to remember that as a result of being shorn in the, of the areas of life that God gave him and power, I don't know what I did with my glasses now. Anyway, they're not over there somewhere, are they? Probably not. But as a result of this being shorn, the Lord departed from him. Now, watch, this is where we're going to go tonight about this issue of the Lord departing from him. And we're going to see that, as I said, Samson is a picture of the nation Israel. Now, there's some things I want to talk about here tonight. And while I was even writing this on the board, God showed me some things in the Bible. In 1 Samuel chapter 4, the Bible talks about three departures of God, three departures of the glory of God. For the first time, my, how many's ever wondered, what is the glory of God? What is the glory of God? I want you to just be thinking about that for a little bit. The Bible said, now watch this, in 1 Samuel, Israel had went into sin, they had got away from God, they were just going into paganisms. Uh, they were in debauchery. Eli's sons were wicked. They were laying with the women in the, in the temple. They were stealing and, and, and robbing and looting the people in their offerings. And God judged Israel. And the way he judged them was when the Bible says that when they went into battle with Philistines, they took the Ark of the Covenant from the people of Israel. And the Bible said that they named that child Ichabod that was born at that time because the glory of God had departed. One of the most important principles in the Word of God and for a Christian's life, for a church, for a nation, is the issue of the glory of God departing. Let me tell you, when the glory of God departs, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. And uh, so they, uh, the glory of God departed in 1 Samuel. And watch this, they were defeated. Now here's what I'm going to get to. Samson had his power cut away from him. And he wist not that the Lord had departed from him. He didn't even realize it. Israel was going out to fight a battle, and they brought the Ark of the Covenant. They didn't even know the show was already over. Now, I'm afraid America doesn't even know the show may be over. We wist not that the glory of God has departed. So you have that departure. When you get into the book of Ezekiel, and I'd like you to turn there tonight to the book of Ezekiel. I want you to go ahead. If you'll put up on the board Ezekiel chapter 8. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 8. Now we're looking at the second departure. Ezekiel chapter 8. And again, I just want to try to be methodical and take my time tonight. And I can't believe I've left my glasses somewhere. I don't know where. I'm going to try one more time to find them. By the way, welcome to folks online. We appreciate you listening. And I hope this... Look at there what I found. Never know. Seek and you shall find... All righty. In, in Ezekiel chapter 8, this is a, another passage of Scripture, one of the three departures. Again, just keep this in mind. Watch this. Samson's story is a picture of the nation Israel or of any nation that forgets God, but specifically Israel. Then God takes that prophetic truth and gives three examples of it in the Bible. First of all, 1 Samuel chapter 4, when the Philistines, the Ark of the Covenant. And because of their sin and debauchery, the glory of God departed from them. When you get into the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel is prophesying and telling them, you're going to have, the glory of God is going to depart. And here's, watch what he says there in chapter number 8, verse number 5. Is everybody there say amen. amen? Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the, the way toward the north, so I lifted up mine eyes and saw the way toward the north. Behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. Hmm. Image of jealousy. He said, Furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here, that I should go far from my sanctuary. 
But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. Now here's what's going on. Ezekiel is a prophet of the Lord. He's a representative of God to the people. A representative of the whole spiritual thing. And God is telling Ezekiel, he said, listen, I want you to come in to the religious world of this nation, and I want you to see the rot and the abominations and why I'm getting ready to do what I'm getting ready to do. Old timers, I haven't heard a message on this probably in the last 50 years. But old time preaching used to preach on this chapter and it's called the message on the hole in the wall. And you'll see it here. He brought me, verse number 7, to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. And he and then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. I want to say something to the preachers that's coming up in here. There are going to be times in your life when you're going to have to dig to get to the hole in the wall. You're going to have to dig to expose the filth and the rot and enable people to see the nastiness of this world and what's happening in the sight of God. He said, dig now in the wall. And when I digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. What was going on? They were hiding their wickedness and hiding their abominations behind a wall of religion and self-righteousness. This is dangerous to a person, to a church, and to a nation. Never believe that you can hide your abominations from Almighty God. He will dig it up, dig it out, and expose it. Verse number 10. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form, watch this, of creeping things, and abominable beast, and all the idols of the house of Israel, portrayed upon the wall round about, and there stood before them 70 men of the ancients. And uh, it goes ahead there. We'll read there for a while. The house of Israel, the midst of them stood Jezaniah, the son of Shaphan. And of every man his censer in his hand, a thick cloud of incense went up. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the, watch this, what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Yeah. Every man in the chambers of his imagery. Yeah. For they say, the Lord seeth us not. I want to give you something tonight. You may think that God doesn't know what you're thinking about. He knows what you're thinking about. He knows your thoughts. He knows my thoughts. And it's a dangerous thing to think that somehow or another I can be in a hole and dug in a pit so deep somewhere where God can't see through what I'm thinking and what's going on in my mind. And they said, the Lord seeth us not. And why did they think that? Because they said, the Lord hath forsaken the earth. He saith also unto me, turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. What? He said, you haven't seen it all. It's worse than you're seeing. Let me just stop just a minute and tell you something. It's worse than you're seeing on the news. Amen. We're living in a nation where children are being abducted. Especially foreign children are being kidnapped, brought into this country for the abomination practices of many rich people in this land and people that's not even rich. Sold into slavery. We're talking about abominations. We're talking about the lowest of the low, the filth of the filth. Where do you think all these missing children are at? The Bible said that when God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, he did it because the cry of Sodom come up. Who was crying in Sodom? The children. What do you think is going on when they've got some, and I, and I don't, listen, I don't like to talk about this, but I'm here. This is time I'm in, and I'm going to preach on it. When they've got some vile, perverted, drag queen sodomite sitting in front of a bunch of kindergartners and second, and third, and fourth graders reading, what do you think those sodomite drag queens have got in their mind? How many of you here knows what snuff movies are? Snuff movies are where? Child molesters? Take children, do unspeakable things to them, and then kill them. And we're in a mess in this country. And I'm going to tell you something else. If you could have the last 40 years went inside the womb of a mother and saw what was going on with them little children in there, it'd make you want to vomit and puke. Being torn from limb to limb and just 
literally being ripped apart and their heads crushed. Now I want to tell you something tonight. God looking down from heaven, he's not laughing about this. This country, if it does not have a major repentance revival, I believe God will destroy this nation. And he will do to it what worse than what, because I'm going to tell you something. Israel never did any worse than what we're doing. He never did any worse than what we're doing. And God is showing a picture here of how he is exposing. And I'm going to tell you something. Listen, the most, I don't like to think about it. And I sure don't like to talk about it from the pulpit. And I don't like to dwell on it, and I don't. But this country has an abomination garbage going on. I told Karen this evening, I'm going to tell you what I believe with all my heart. I believe that there are many political, elected political people in this country that are blackmailed. And I'm going to tell you why. Because the way they vote. You're like, well, I thought you was conservative. I thought you were Christian. And they vote for things that are abominations. I'm going to tell you why I believe. I believe they've been somewhere partying in Washington, D.C., got drugged up and messed up and got into orgies and all that other kind of stuff and got filmed and they're owned and blackmailed and they'll vote exactly how they tell them to or they'll expose them to the country and they'll ruin their political careers. They have the characteristics of people who are blackmailed. You don't turn around and do just the flip opposite of what you claim you are in a critical situation like that unless somebody's got you by the ear. And I'm, and I'm going to tell you something. By the way, that's, that's that old skill, political skill from nations down through the, through the centuries is blackmail. Now go with me, if you will. Uh, and here's, so here's what's happening. God in Ezekiel is saying, you, you're committing abominations. You're filthy. You're vile. Down to the imaginations of how you think. You go to your temple and you have your worship and you do your sacrifice. And that's why by the time you come to the Malachi, the end of the Old Testament, he just away with your sacrifices. That he was sick of them. There's nothing to it. It's all show. You can come to church and it's all show. But down inside, who are we really inside? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. This is, this, I'm going to talk to the church tonight. I'm, 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 I want, we talk about externals and internals. And externals are and always are a reflection of internals. But if we're not careful, we're just concerned about externals. We're not concerned about what's going on in the heart and in the mind. And we're obsessed with this as long as I look right, act right, talk right, do right, in the eyes of certain people, everything's going to be just fine. That's not so. God is showing you here that he goes beyond the externals. He goes down inside where other people can't see, and he knows and sees and will expose it. I want you to remember something tonight that we all need to remember, that everything is going to be brought out at judgment. Our thoughts, our words, our attitudes, our motives, our deeds, all of it. It's going to come out. You read your Bible. You'll, you'll discover everything I said there is exactly right. We are, there's nothing hid from the eyes of God. So here's what happens. He says, you're wicked. You committed abominations. Now watch what happens to Israel in chapter number 9, verse number 3. You can put it up on the wall there if you want to. Verse number 3, and the glory of God, of the God of Israel, was gone up from the cherub. That would be in the holy of holy places. Remember the cherubs on the uh, mercy seat? The two cherubs? That's where the presence, the glory of God resided. See, it was over the Ark of the Covenant. There at the cherubs, the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. A threshold is the door. Wait, it's the threshold. It's right there. So the glory of God rises up. God says, you're wicked. You're abomination. You've committed sin. I'm leaving. I'm departing. Not going to be part of this no more. Glory of God comes off of the, off the Ark of the Covenant, just left there a box. Comes to the threshold. Then watch the next move in chapter 10, verse number 4. Then the glory of God went up from the cherub and stood over the threshold. He goes to the threshold, then up and over the threshold. And you can, saw it, you can read about the cloud and the glory and so forth. The cherubim's wings in verse number 5. Then jump over to verse number 18. 
Then the glory of the Lord departed. There it is. There's your word. Departed from off the threshold of the house and stood over the cherubims. And the cherubims lifted up their wings. See, the Ark of the Covenant with the cherubims is not just a piece of furniture. It's a picture of the, where God resides and the holiness of God and the cherubims around the throne of God. When you get into verse number 19... The last part of there says, The door of the east gate of the Lord's house and the glory of the God of Israel was over them above. Now here's the scene. He was in the Holy of Holies, in the center of Israel, in their presence, wanting to live among them, wanting to bless their lives. They sin against him. They will not repent. They get abominable. And this, when he mentions creeping things and creepy, creepy and nasty and filthy, he's not joking. Now he's talking about the worst of the worst. He said the glory of God is not going to stay there and not going to put up with that and not going to be a part of that. So the glory of God comes up off of the, the uh, uh, Ark of the Covenant between the cherubims, moves over to the threshold of the door of the temple, and it's almost like God hates to leave. It's like he wants to turn, repent. But he's there, and then he rises up, they won't, and then he is over, and then he's out. And if you read your Bible, it tells you where this happens, happens at. In fact, let's go to chapter 11, verse 22. Chapter 11, verse number 22. Then did the cherubims lift up their wings and the wheels beside them, and the glory of the God of Israel was over them above, and the glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city and stood upon the mountain which is on the east side of the city. Does anybody know where that mountain's at? It's Mount Olives. Is anybody getting hold of this? See, because you have the Temple Mount. That's where the Mosque of Omar is today. That temple was there before it was torn down in AD 70 by Titus and them. It's... The glory of God leaves the temple, goes down across Brook Kidron, up on the mount on the east side of Jerusalem. That is Mount Olives. And from there, the glory of God leaves and goes back to heaven. And you know where they're at? They're a nation whose glory has departed. Now watch this. All right. Now we're going to see uh, the, third, the third aspect of that. Watch this. Samson's a type of Israel prophetically. The glory of God departing. We saw how the glory of God departed in 1 Samuel when the religious leaders were corrupt. We saw in Ezekiel the nation became corrupt, secretly wicked as hell. Now watch Matthew chapter 24 and you're going to see the third time that God talks about his departure from a nation. Matthew chapter 24. <clears throat> Jesus is closing out his ministry. And it's before his crucifixion. And he has ministered to those people for those three and a half years. And I want you to look at chapter 23, verse number 37. Everybody there say amen. amen. Jesus speaking, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that what? Killest the prophets and does what? Stonest them that are sent unto thee. How oft? I'm going to tell you something. Right now in America, this evening... Uh, I just want to say this, and I'm thankful for it. It's kind of confusing to me what's going on, but I just know God's in control. Facebook took my page, Table in the Wilderness, and they, on their own accord, updated it, quote. When they did that, they, it, they had 65,000 some followers. It dropped to three. So my first thought was, they're just really trying to wipe me out and stop me from communicating the gospel and the word of God and the, you know, what, uh, our viewpoints to anybody. <clears throat> but something's happened. I have never reached so many vile people in my life. And I am telling you one thing. I am getting the worst I've ever gotten. I was told to go to hell this evening by a woman who calls herself a he. That's happened this afternoon. Go to hell. And I mean, but I'm thrilled because what's happening is, I don't know how this is happening, but now it has gone back and there, a lot of the old clips that I did are circling back around and hitting an entire new group of people. Amen. And it's not people who are, quote, love it and like it, and, oh, bless God, amen. It's people who hate it and despise it. 
And I'm telling you, I don't know. All I can tell you, there's a God in heaven who's, who's in control and who's in power. What's funny is I got three followers, but I got more response from the wicked and more people here in the wicked than I've ever had in my life. I don't get it, but it's there. Amen? I will tell you something also that happened. Last Sunday night, I preached the first message on haircuts from hell. I have never had, ever that I know of, maybe over 3,000 people. Most of the time, it's 1,500, 2,000 that listen to a Sunday message, whether it's Sunday morning or Sunday night. As of about church time tonight, there was 5,700 people who had watched last Sunday night's message. I don't know how all of a sudden, double. I don't know what's going on. Church, pray. But I'm telling you something. We got a God. And there's a spiritual warfare going on. I can't see, but it's out there, and God is in control. And I'm, I'm happy about it, but I also realize I'm in a battle, all right? Now, Jesus here comes in there, and he said, verse 38, he said, I wanted to gather you together as chickens under her wings, verse 37, but you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you what? Desolate. Desolate. There it is. Now watch this. Three times God departs or it makes desolate. Israel was desolate in 1 Samuel. They had a revival under uh, uh, Samuel, David, Solomon, and so forth, and the kingdom, all that. The time went on. They departed from God again. Remember how Samson repeatedly would just be disobedient? They had a departure in Ezekiel, a picture. Then you had the prophetic fulfillment of Ezekiel in Matthew chapter 24. Watch this. It's exactly what it says there. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth till you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Watch verse number 24, chapter 24 and verse 1. And Jesus went out and did what? departed from the temple. That's exactly what happened in 1 Samuel. They didn't have a temple, but they had the presence. They had the ark. They had the tabernacle. He departed. But he came, watch this. This is good. I just got this to say then. But he, but he came back. Ezekiel, the glory of the Lord departed. Matthew 24. Jesus, now, now you tell me who's the glory. I just give it away. Who is the glory of God? Jesus. What is the glory of God? I want to say this as plain as I can say it. Jesus Christ is the glory of God. Amen. Your Bible would finally be honest with you. For years, I want in all honesty, what is the glory of God? Is it just an auroric light presence? What is it? I found out this evening studying that Jesus is the glory of God. When it's talking about, when that, when that glory left in 1 Samuel, it was Christ. When that glory left in Ezekiel, it was Christ. Amen. Matthew 24 shows you that. The glory departed at the same place, and it was Christ. Now watch this. There's three departures, but there's three returns. Jesus came the first time in Bethlehem. The second time will be at the rapture, and the third time will be at the revelation. Grace. Kingdom. Power. Victory. He departs, but he's coming back. Now, at that time, in Matthew chapter 23 and chapter 24, it's a terrible condition as Israel. They had rejected the Lord. Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And in Acts chapter 1, if you know the Bible there in Acts chapter 1, verse 11, he went up from Mount Olives, right? That was the same place the glory of God went up at Ezekiel. That's why in Ezekiel, what you're seeing in Ezekiel is a prophetic picture, just like Samuel, of Matthew chapter 24, that when a nation sins against God, the glory of God departs from that nation. Okay? Now, an Israel like Samson wist not that the Lord had departed from him. Israel kept going to the temple. Israel kept all their stuff going. But in AD 70, God destroyed the temple. He said, I'm tired of even your show. I'm not even going to let you have a temple to worship in. But here's something happened to Sam Samson. His hair began to grow back long. Now, let me just say this to you. Israel as a nation, they were blinded. And they were. God tells you that in Romans chapter 9, 10, 11. They were bound. Israel's been carried into captivity. What happened to them? 
They were blinded, they were bound, they were carried into captivity, and they ground. And I'm going to tell you something further. When God says it, they grind at the mill. Jewish, the nation of Israel for about 2,000 years, by and large until the nation was reborn, they did nothing but grind in the nations of the world in which they were led captive and scattered in. And let me tell you something further. When Hitler came to power and put the final solution into play, they were ground in the furnace ovens of Treblinka and all the other death camps. When God says something, folks, he is not kidding. And when God tells you and I that you mess with me and I'll lift my glory from you, he is not kidding. And here's what scares me about America. America has had the glory of God upon it in the past. No doubt about it. Never been a nation ever in the history of humanity that's been blessed like Israel. I'll show you something in a little bit here. But Samson's hair began to grow again. Guess what? Israel's hair began to grow again. At late 1880s, the Zionist movement, 1948, reborn. And now Israel has regained some of his former glory in the land of Israel. Yeah. Now, Israel's compared, I want you to stay with me now. Israel is compared to a woman in the Bible. The church is compared to a virgin bride. I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Now, this is not light stuff, okay? And I don't claim to be no big Bible scholar, but I'll tell you, the Bible's rich. And, any t and here's, how you, here's how you get stuff. You compare words with other words. Where, what's, where does it talk about this subject, this word, and the other place in the Bible? Remember what, hap what was it that, that, that Satan did to Samson? Cut his hair off. I'm going to show you something. Israel is a picture of the woman. The church is a picture of the bride. But the principle is for either. Now watch 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Go to verse number 6. For if the woman hmm, be not covered. You ever hear anybody say, I've got you covered? Yeah. Who and what does the person who is doing the covering has? They've got power and authority. I've got you covered. You won't say that without saying, hey, i got your back. I've got you covered. You'll be all right. If the woman be not covered, let her also be what? That's what happened to Israel. She did not retain the covering of God's word. God's truth and God's righteousness and God allowed her to be shorn of her power. Watch verse 6. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. She had a haircut. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Hmm. I don't know about you, but I want to be covered by God. It's a picture. It takes you back to the Old Testament. Samson, shorn. Picture of Israel, the woman, Israel. Hosea. Okay? Verse 7, for a man indeed ought not to cover his head. He's a picture of Christ. For as much as he is the image and glory of God. The husband is the representative of Jesus Christ in that home. In that marriage. He is to cover his wife. Spiritual, physical covering. Okay? I want you to watch this. This is wild. For a man, verse number 7... Indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. Hmm. For the man is not 
of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman was created for the man. Israel was created for Christ. The church is created for Christ. The church didn't create Christ. You know where the church is at today? In a flip. It's trying to, the church is trying to create a Christ that suits the way they want to live. Verse number 9, verse number 10. For this cause ought the woman to have what? Now, I'm going to tell you tonight, this is why preservation and inspiration of the Bible is critical because most new versions, a lot of versions will take, they're like, well, that's not, you, there's a lot of words you could use. No, it's not. There's a reason the Holy Ghost put the word power here. What did Samson lose when he was shorn? He lost his power. What God's telling you here. When you get out of God's structure and God's order and God's design for marriage, home, family, husband, wife, anything else, you'll lose your power. Power to keep your home together, power to have any joy, power to have any peace, power to have any success. And this is what Satan's after in America. That's why he's reversing roles. Now I'm just taking my time tonight. Let this sink in, soak, soak through. This is why there is an attack. Uh, this afternoon I got a text from your husband. Wisconsin truck stop bathroom sign don't matter who goes in and it's going to, it's going across this country what's going on it's just like that deal I got this evening <clears throat> called herself Susan but then when you go back into the Facebook page and find out his profile by their own writing What's going on? This revol role reversal causes, it's, it's shearing the power of God from this nation. And we will lose, and God's power and glory will depart. And you know what I think? Sometimes I think it's like this, that the glory of God is, is standing at the edge of the ocean. And looking back and saying, I don't want to leave you, America. But I won't be part of this. You're, I'm not conforming to you. And then we're going to see him lift. And then we're going to see him out. And when that happens, I'm, I'm going to give you a little something. I've been preaching 40 years. From the time Jesus departed to AD 70 was 36 and a half years. Those people went right on going down to the temple. They went right on going to work. They went right on doing everything they were doing and did not know that the clock was ticking to their destruction. Jesus had already told them that there'll not be a stone left right there in chapter 24. There'll not be a stone left upon this building. What's he know? Who's he? Now, I'm telling you something. We better perk up our ears. Go on down there in verse number 11. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, so even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. Judge in yourselves. Is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? What's that talking about? Oh, I need to, I need to have, have long hair or, or a hat on. Not really, that's not what it's talking about. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. It's talking about the church operating without the authority and the power and the presence of God. Praying uncovered. I'm going to tell you how it happens. You hear the truth of the word of God? I'm not biting by it. You just start, and you start praying, you're praying uncovered. You're praying shorn. How did the woman get uncovered? Shorn. What was the shoring about, the shearing off about? Taking the power away. Here's, get this. God will not give his presence and power to a sinning people and a wicked people who are playing church. And playing Christianity. Verse number 13, judge yourselves as the comely that a woman pray unto God, prayed unto God and covered doth not. Watch this, even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, 
it is a shame unto him. Why? Because he's supposed to be the covering. It's a role reversal. Do you see this? This is all role reversal. This is a flipping upside down of God's creative design in male and female and their roles in life. We're at, I literally believe everything I'm seeing about this transgenderism is going to bring the departure of the glory of God. I mean, it's, it's like God's already said, that's what you want. And there'll be a point, he's out of here. The presence and the protection, the covering of God will be gone. Let me just tell you something tonight. Russia is not stupid. China is not stupid. They're both, as far as their governments go, are buzzards watching a dying nation. They're like praying buzzards watching how close to death we are and who's going to rush in first and take the wealth of America. We're selling land to the Chinese. There's 161 million acres the Chinese have bought of agricultural land in America. What do you think they're going to do with their food they grow? You think you're getting it? We've got a president and his son who've made all kinds of deals underhanded with China and Russia and Ukraine. The Ukraine deals way, it's way more about than any American knows right now. And what's happening is, I've got I to keep trucking here because we've got stuff to cover. Verse 14, doth not even nature itself teach you that if man have long hair, it's a shame unto him. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. Whoa, 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 what? It's her glory. Who is the glory? What's, it, what's this? It's her glory. What is her glory? Her covering. What is her covering? What is the glory? Christ. It's a picture. He's giving you a picture in physical aspects that shows you the, the reason and the motive and the power of removing the covering of Christ, removing the glory. What is he saying? Just take it for, this is Bible. I'm not preaching nothing about the Bible. God just literally says that if the woman be shorn, it's a shame. She's, she's, she's removing her glory. What's all this about? You've got to go back and see it. It's a picture of the church saying, we don't need the glory of God. We don't need his covering. We don't need his authority. We don't need his power. And the church is allowing itself to be shorn of its glory. And the glory is Jesus Christ. And Christ is not in the church. Watch this. In the book of Revelation, in the last of the seven churches, where is Jesus? Where is he? He's outside. He's not in the church. He's outside the church. If any man, where's he at? He's outside. What's happened? He's left. He's departed. The glory is gone. Let me just tell you a little something tonight. The glory is gone out of the average American church. And you know what the glory is? It's Christ. I fear, as I study this, that we're in far greater danger than we think we are as a nation. Oh, my. Verse 15, but if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given for her a covering. Okay, it's her glory and it's her covering. It's a picture of Christ, the church, his covering, the glory of God in it and on it and taking care of it and so forth. Now, uh, the glory and power is gone from the church when we defy and disobey the word of God. Now we're going to look at the seven locks that are shorn off of a nation in detail and we'll be done. I'll try not to take too long at this. Remember, there's seven locks. This is where I want to get to. In the tabernacle, in the temple, there was a candlestick. And that candlestick had seven uh, parts to it, seven lamps to it. Okay? 
You couldn't see in that. It was the only light in there. Watch this. The tabernacle of the temple had no natural light. The only light in there was this right here. If this light was gone, you were in darkness. Okay? I want you to, to look again. Now, here's, in the Bible, Christ is called the branch. Okay? And what that's talking about when it says the branch, it's talking about this right here. Now, there are seven aspects of the Spirit of God. The Bible calls it the seven spirits. I want you to take your Bibles, put up on the word Isaiah chapter 11. Now, I'll show you this and why it's so important. This is what Satan is after when he cuts a nation's hair off. This is what he's after. Isaiah chapter 11. This is what happened to Israel. It's hard for me to preach like this, methodically. You know, I want to get on the Ferris wheel and go around and around and take off and go. And where we land, nobody knows, you know. But you can't, I can't do that with this. All right, Isaiah chapter 11, watch this. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a capital B branch shall grow out of his roots. Now watch verse number 2. And the number 1, Spirit of the Lord. Number two, shall rest, shall rest upon him. Number two, the spirit of wisdom. Number three, of understanding. The spirit of counsel, might, knowledge, and fear of the Lord. There are seven aspects of the spirit of God in that verse. And here they are. The first, if you want to write these down, is this right here. It's the spirit of wisdom. I mean, the spirit, the spirit of the Lord right here. Now, I want to give you something. Anybody know the name of this church? Where did it get the name? Where did it, why, where did the, why do we call it liberty? 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17 says, Where, watch this, the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty is not lawlessness. Liberty is freedom within the bounds of Christ. Of his word. There is no freedom outside Christ. So the first one is the spirit of the Lord. Look at your Bible. The second one is the spirit of wisdom right here. Wisdom is the ability to see life from God's perspective. The next one is the spirit of understanding. Number three. Number four, the spirit of counsel. Might. Might. Knowledge and the fear of the Lord. This is what was cut off of Samson. This is what will be cut off your life, your home, your family, and your nation, a church, anything. Watch this. The first thing is they'll cut off the spirit of the Lord. And that's done usually by bringing in a false spirit. And a false spirit comes by false Bibles. His words are spirit and they're truth. Amen. You get that cut off? Yeah. You're in trouble. Yeah. The next thing he cut off is the spirit of wisdom. You can't see. You can't see truth. You can't grasp it. That is understanding. You can't grasp the truth that's there. You have no understanding. Does anybody get a feeling right now that we have a president and an administration that absolutely does not know what to do? And everything they do is total opposite of what should be done. You know why? Right here it is. The Spirit of the Lord has departed, they have no wisdom. They have no understanding. The fourth one is the spirit of counsel. They don't know what to do. They have nobody. To, they won't listen to God. In the multitude of counselors, safety. Then the spirit of might. America was the one time. You always still are. 
Don't trust in, don't trust in man. Don't trust in man. Don't trust in horses the Bible talks about. You know that God can turn battles against those who have power. I want you to get this right here. At one time, America's educational system taught knowledge. We developed the first atomic bomb. I could take you through everything you enjoy at your house, and 90% of it was discovered and produced and manufactured here in America to start with. Where did internet come from? Where did wireless phones? The man that, that developed the algorithm that does your phone is a Jew that lives in California. He used to be probably dead by now. Do you know what happened to Hitler? The same thing happened to Hitler. Hitler began to persecute the Jewish people and all the brains of Germany moved to America. That's a flat truth. Amen. And we, were, we had knowledge. We had might. We had understanding. We had counsel. We had wisdom. You know why? Because we had the Lord. But when we took God out of our educational system and then it moved into our churches, we took God out of our churches, began our humanistic, you know, we're going to decide what the Bible says and, you know, we're, we're the ones who determine whether it's Bible or not. And the glory of God does what? I want you, if I had, if I had the seven candlestick up here tonight and it was the only light in this church house and I went, Puh. 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 and I gradually blew each one out until there's finally... And that light, and you know what Jesus said he is? He's the light of the world. And so knowledge is gone. And now, there's no fear of the Lord anywhere. I mean, people literally curse God. They're God haters. If you don't think so, you ought to see some of the messages I get. I mean, they hate God, and they, they have absolutely no fear of God whatsoever. Yeah. And it's gone. And there's no light left in this land. And the glory of the Lord will depart. That's what the story of Samson and his seven locks being cut is. And, the, and he wist not that the Lord had departed from him. America doesn't even have enough sense to know now. God's departing. Israel was to be a light to the nations. Now, again, let's go back just a little bit. Samson is a picture of Israel. They were to be a light to the nations. That's what your Bible says. Samson's haircut is a picture of the power and the glory of God being taken off a nation. And it's a picture that applies to the individual, to the family, to the church, and to the nation. And when this is happening, we're in trouble. When a nation rejects Christ and spurns his word, the glory will depart and um, be in trouble. I'll give an example. 1963, what did we do? Took prayer out. Then we took Bible reading out. Then we legalized murder. No wisdom, no understanding, no counsel. And we begin to put the light out in our nation. And we replace Jesus with a Jesus of our own liking. That's why Paul said, beware. They preach another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit. Be careful. And that's what's really going on. The glory is departing. I think that we're in a stage in Ezekiel. If I was guessing, we're maybe somewhere around that third stage where God has stopped. See, here's the interesting thing. He came up off of the ark between the cherubims. He moved to the threshing. He stopped. He just didn't go... He'd stop. And he'd move further and he'd stop. And he'd move further. And three times your Bible says he did that. And the fourth time he went up. To me, we're like the third stage. 
and his glory will depart. And America won't even, really, honestly, most of America doesn't even know it. They're just ignorant to it, could care less. Anybody got any thoughts on this before I dismiss the church tonight? Anybody brain full? <laughs> but it's there. Samson, 1 Samuel, Ezekiel, Matthew 24. And I could really take you back on into the book of Revelation and show this to you in the Revelation chapter 1 and Revelation chapter 19. Yes, Jim. Is there a way in Scripture that shows this to be reversed? I don't know. Good question. Here's the thing I will say. He's departing, but he'll return. Uh, when you get, I, I tell you what I did. I left out tonight Ezekiel 43. I shouldn't have done this. I didn't mean to, but I did. In Ezekiel 43, it shows you his return. When he comes, it even prophesies, this is wild. Let's just go there, if you don't care. Let's just go there. Ezekiel 43. Let me make sure I've got my deal right. Maybe I've got the right, right chapter. Hmm. Ezekiel 43, I'm pretty sure that's it. Hang on. Yeah, there it is. Ezekiel 43, afterward he brought me to the gate, even to the gate that looketh toward the east. Because that's the east side of the temple mount. And behold, watch this, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east, and his voice was like the noise of many waters, and the earth shineth in his glory. That's Revelation 1 and Revelation 19. And it's telling you that Jesus Christ departed. You know what he's telling Israel? I left, but I'm coming back. Amen. So, Jim, I answered your question. As far as I know, I think the only answer is the return of Christ. Historically, nations do not. They continue to. They might have a time of revival, but then they descend. A little time of revival, then they descend. That's kind of what. My take on it. I think the only, the only answer, folks, is Jesus coming back. And he'll set up a... a I wish I took time, but it's, I'm looking at the clock. It's 817. But the kingdom, when he comes back... I, I, I want you to look at this here. Yeah, I've got to show you. I'm trying to find my reference on that, and I can't find... Hang on just a minute here. There it is. Ezekiel chapter two, 42, 3 in verse number 2. And let's go down through verse number 5. It was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. And the visions were like the vision I saw by the river Kibar. That goes back to chapter 8, 9, and 10. I fell upon the face. Now watch verse 4. And the glory of the Lord came where? Into the house by the way of the gate, whose prospect is toward the east. You know what it's telling you? He left, but he's coming back, and he tells exactly where, he, where he's coming back into the temple. The temple will be rebuilt, and I'm not just sure whether before the tribulation or during the tribulation. I don't know that. Maybe somebody else does, but I don't. Verse number 5, So the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. What is he telling you? Christ is coming back to Israel. He's going to be in their midst again, and he'll be the glory of Israel again. But look now at uh, verse number 9, because I want you to see this. And he says, Let them put away their whoredom, the carcasses of their kings far from me, and I will dwell in the midst of them. How long? Forever. Forever. This is talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ in Revelation chapter 19. And I've got to get this, and we'll shut down. Ezekiel 44, verses 1 through 4. Man, oh man, oh man get this. this. This is so wild, so unbelievable prophecy fulfilled. Then he brought me back to the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary, which looketh toward the east. How many how many's been to Israel? Raise your hand. If you've been to the Temple Mount, and you know about the temple, the eastern gate was where Jesus left the temple in Matthew chapter 4, went down across Brook Kidron, up on Mount Balls and out. Okay? It's telling you that the, it's the, the east, verse number 1. And watch this prophecy. Then the Lord said unto me, This gate shall be shut. Are you reading your Bible? Does anybody know that today that the gate to the Mount, Temple Mount on the east is shut up? You cannot walk through it. It shall not be opened and no man shall enter in by it because the Lord, the God of Israel, hath entered in by it. Therefore it shall be shut. 
It is, look at, look at verse number 3. It tells you, it is for the prince. The prince, he shall set in it to eat bread before the Lord. He shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate and go out by the way of the same. Then he brought me here by the way of the north gate before the house. And I looked and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. And I fell upon my face. And every time you see somebody fall upon their face, they're in the presence of the glory of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, what, and the great thing, I'm glad you asked that question because the great thing about all this is, yes, he departed, but he's coming back. And he's going to be in that temple and the glory of the Lord. And by the way, get this, the glory of the Lord, the Bible says in the Old Testament prophecies about the millennial reign, shall fill the earth. It'll fill the earth. The thing, I don't, want to, I don't want to miss the millennial reign. I'm so excited about the millennial reign. It's so exciting to think about Jesus Christ is going to rule and reign on this earth in the temple and righteousness. He'll rule with the rod of iron. It's going to be right. We're not going to worry about elections. There ain't going to be no Democrats. Probably won't be no Republicans. <laughs> I got to throw in a little laundryness every while. Wait a minute. Anybody else got any questions about this tonight? Yes. Kind of blows my mind. Everything that we're receiving yeah. that I've just never thought through on. Never thought through on. It just, this is just deep stuff. I mean, this isn't milk. This is meat. Brother Joe. Looking at this a little bit zoomed out perspective there. The first time he came, he dealt, dwelt with man. This is Moses, Mount Sinai, comes down, comes into the, the uh, tabernacle that they built there. Okay. He dwells with them. He departs. That's Ichabod. He left that first time. I told you one time about the study of the uh, path of the ark where it, where it finally was reunited back in the temple of Solomon. That's when the glory came back again. No man could stand there. Man cannot minister when Christ builds the house. Flesh has to be gone. That departs in Ezekiel. It's gone again until Bethlehem. Uh, it departed again. Uh, yeah. It'll come back again. Yeah. But again, maybe not necessarily in a national sense, but like in Solomon's, whose heart was prepared to seek the Lord, he was beloved of the Lord. Yeah. You can have that personal presence with him when your heart is prepared. There's so many things connected to this. The cleansing of the temple... What did Jesus do? Rope, or, or the braided, braided the deal, cleansed the temple. What's, what's the message there? Oh, everybody likes to talk about Jesus whooping them out of the temple. He wants Reg Kelly. He, he wants this temple clean. And once in a while, he brings his whip of chastisement and cleans out the temple. And he wants his glory in this temple. But if I've got hole-in-the-wall stuff, creepy stuff, Somebody had a hand up somewhere. Yes, I'm sorry. No, it's just Christian bookstore trivia just got real for me. The glory of the Lord is your strength. Yes. That's Jesus. It's Jesus. I'm telling you, I was sitting at my table sitting and, and it just hit me. It's just like the Holy Spirit said, Reggie, you, you've been wondering, oh, what is the, really, we're trying to describe the glory of God? It's right in front of you. It's Jesus Christ. When it says the glory is departed, who was it went up from Mount Olives? It's Jesus. If Jesus is in our life, there'll be glory. If he's in our church, there'll be glory. If he's in our home, there'll be glory. But if he's not there, there ain't no glory. Anybody else tonight? I hope you enjoyed this. Hope it's helpful to you. We serve a living God. We have a Bible that's true and real.